Today I wanted to talk to you guys about the burn-in features on the LG C1 and basically do a review of them to kind of let you know what they are, what they do, and kind of help you with uh, maybe popular, maybe not popular known tip on how to prevent burn-in altogether. So let's just dive right in by talking about the burn-in features that you guys do have. So we're going to go into the OLED screensaver here, and the first one you see is pixel cleaning. You really don't need to ever touch this one unless you have a problem where you notice that there's uh, something that needs to be cleaned, right? Like you have some image retention that's staying for a little bit longer. Then you can manually cycle this. This tends to lower the lifespan of OLED, so I wouldn't use this every single day or willy-nilly. That's just something you just don't do, especially since most TVs automatically, at least most OLED TVs, I should say, do an automatic kind of cleansing cycle for themselves. So when you turn it off, it's pretty automatic. You don't really have to worry about it. So I would not manually do it every single time I'm done watching my OLED. That's the first kind of tip that a lot of people already kind of know. Screen move. Never disable this. This is basically going to prevent the screen from staying in a single spot by having little variations it's it's like a it's like a pixel shift each pixel is constantly shifting and you want that so that you again when you're watching things that are static you don't run into burn in a lot of the burn in cases that i've seen are from people turning this off thinking that you know it doesn't do anything or they don't need it on i can't stress that if you turn this off you're doing yourself a massive disservice so just leave that on now logo luminance adjust is a very wonky one in my personal opinion because I feel like it, it does what it says, but also not really. So I use logo luminance on low. That's the baseline, and I don't change it from there. Because when I turn it to high, I don't see any major benefit to going to high versus low. Now, again, I don't really have a way of testing this on a complex level or anything. But I still don't see a major benefit to that. So I don't really use it as often on high as I do low. But turning it on low will be great because, again, it will help lower the luminance of the logos like you know when you're watching the news or you know your kids watching tv or something like that or you're playing video games whatever the case may be lowering down the brightness of bright little logo elements so very important and all of this stuff will help prevent burning but there is an extra tip that like literally on all of these videos i rarely ever see anyone talk about so Right below OLED screensaver, you have energy saving. And the best thing you could do is literally going down to screen off and just turning it off when you're not using your screen and on when you are using your screen. So many people neglect this and like just straight up don't even use this feature. And I think it's something that also is a massive, massive deal breaker. Another thing that you can use, you can also use energy saving if you're okay with tossing away some screen brightness. You can put it on automatic or you can set it to something like minimum, which does have a pretty decent uh, reduction in brightness. But at the same time, it also is helping kind of preserve the overall integrity of the uh, organic compounds in OLED because it's not as bright or blasting out at the brightest setting all the time. So if you wanted to do something like set your OLED light to maximum, for example, but you didn't necessarily want it to have the full effect, you could use minimum and that would help give you a nice, pretty bright screen, if that makes sense. But at the same time, you're not using the full capabilities wearing out the compounds faster. Now, if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't use my OLED this way because I frankly don't care and I'm willing to take the risk. But if you're somebody trying to prevent burn-in and you're trying to keep your your OLED as pristine as possible for the longest amount of time, then that's my recommendation there. But essentially, using all these things in tandem, those two things, that's basically what you do to prevent burn-in. It's pretty straightforward. There's not really a whole lot to it. So if you found this video helpful, smack a like on this video, subscribe, and join the journey if you like content like this. And if I missed something, I would love to hear what you do to prevent burn-in in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. I give the LG C1 a 10 out of 10 as far as burn-in prevention. I haven't even seen so much as image retention because they do a really good job of mitigating a lot of that stuff. And uh, just to close the video, I've even had cases where I've gone to the store and I actually forgot that this was on and I had no burn-in to speak of at all so yeah it's definitely really good when you and I, and I had it left on like ps5 or xbox series x home menu like this 
I can't remember which, and I walked back in the room, and I'm like, oh my god, I did not just do that. So yeah, it's definitely strong. Of course, time will tell. I'll do burn-in tests to confirm this, but I just wanted to kind of do a review of the features and kind of talk about how you prevent it, uh, how you prevent burn-in and things like that on the LG Z1. So hopefully this helps you guys out again, and thanks so much for watching the number one brand in honesty, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later.